Guards Spotlight. 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 Guards Spotlight
the, so Gun Machine was also another one. Now, for video games, and this surprised me a lot. I love Dead Space, so the fact that he wrote in Dead Space just surprised me, but yeah. it also explains the whole technology aspects and, like, <laughs> those creatures in the dark. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's definitely worth it. It's an older game, and I don't think they have any remastered editions for that. So you're out of luck there. Cold Winter was a PS3 game? I think it was a PS3 game. Don't quote me on that. And Hostile Wars, which was a PC Did he write game. those too? He wrote mm-hmm. a lot of the story parts for that. So yeah, he, he's the main writer on this, and uh, you can tell. Like, the writing, I'd say, was pretty solid. Oh, the, po- yeah. the writing was solid, yeah. yeah. The pacing was good. Um, and it I'm fleshed out yeah. the characters. The writing fleshed out the yeah. characters really well. And it was a dark satire sort of. It, it? Yeah, it does have satirical it's elements. That's a good. That's a good word to use. The right? take on yeah. the, uh, what's it called, on the religious elements was definitely there from his type of touch in the into the show. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That was, that's absolutely oh, no, right. His, yeah, yeah. Please go he on. He has a very weird sense in how he stands on the religious aspects. So the way he threw that in and how, the connection with the way, Castlevania naturally goes as a whole. Mm. Not, not only was decently accurate, not, no, not decently, it was really accurate. It was also in a dark in a sense of some people can corrupt religion very easily. Mm. And they showed it, v- he showed it very well. Yeah. He's, um, he's known, you mentioned, he does sociocultural commentary. Yeah. yeah. And he, he really does um, highlight that with the institution of the Catholic Church. Doesn't, like I, we talked about this before, doesn't really go after religion. He, he goes after the way in this show, he goes after the way people corrupt religion how they change the views yeah yeah, and manipulate other people use it for their own malicious intent yeah yeah which uh which i love it wasn't an attack it wasn't an attack at anything it was a beautiful way of introducing that element right there's some great uh, without spoiling there's just some great lines about how kind of man corrupts the um the otherwise loving nature of what catholicism can actually teach yeah it also goes into nature too right yeah absolutely it felt like it was man's corruption in the world Mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of the element of hate came into, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Warren Ellis is great at that. As far as writing goes, I know we're focusing on him. We'll go into others <laughs> soon. <laughs> but he's really good at just uh, comment, uh, about providing commentary on on the dark side of humanity. I know a lot of artists do that. Most of the great artists do that. He's one of those great artists who does a wonderful job of that. Okay. He makes you think, but he also makes you laugh. Yeah, and no, he, There's he a little bit of that here. A little bit, a little, little bit, bit, but uh, yeah. I love the main car, a character for that. Yeah. He had, like, really nice lines, were all delivered, because it gave him character. The main, you're talking about Trevor. Yeah, Trevor. Trevor Belmont, yeah, yeah. Belmont. I, I was, Belmont, thank Belmont. you. Belmont, Thank yeah. you, I said it fast. And uh, the thing through Castlevania is you will be playing a Belmont upset one or two, I think it was, where I won't say who you're playing, but it's another character that you do meet in the series. So it follows their lineage mm-hmm. and how they hope they hold off Dracula from resurrecting because he just comes back every single time and it's how they deal with that. Mm. So that's the main aspect of Castlevania to keep in mind. So this is Trevor Belmont. He was portrayed really differently. In this show? Yeah, because Kyle was mentioning it earlier. Oh, no, the, um, the images which they took, the, they've had like two or three other images. One where he's basically just wearing like just a uh, like a plate that covers the chest. For, so the chest plate and shoulder plates and then that's really it for what they show for most pictures but otherwise they have a very interesting like a very artistic asian drawing to it rather and he seemed very like asian style effeminate so mm. he, he wasn't very like male heavy right, right, right. Male, male stereotypes he, he had like long those very long boots that go really high mm. up to like almost the, the, the thighs, thighs like, yeah. well definitely on the thighs but it was ger- very gender fluid Whereas when you see this one, you see him and his fur, like, uh, cape alone. He's definitely very masculine with it. it he, he, go on. Oh, no. It reminded me a lot of Game of Thrones. It, I was going to say, he looks like a Stark. Yeah, he does look like yeah, a Stark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, really does reference. look like a Stark. Yeah. And the thing is, um, when they started the series, they started planning it in 2005. Before that, that yeah, that's when they started, but it was hard that. to get this out, right? Mm-hmm. Until Warren Ellis and Eddie Shanker mm-hmm. jumped into this, it wasn't that well known. Mm-hmm. And then Netflix picked it up. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I just remember them saying that um, it had no Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Like 2005, I don't remember Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones started, I think, in, in 2011? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was six or seven years ago now. And a lot of the dark 
medieval type stuff didn't mm-hmm. exist at that time mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we have that popularity and this mm-hmm. was ahead of its time mm-hmm. it just came out perfect for them to launch now right mm. and i think they took elements from game of thrones i'm sure it influenced it given the trajectory that game of thrones has, has gone yeah. influence that it has uh, i also want to mention his attire he had a crest that crest came from one of my favorite games of castlevania i know it's not popular it was for the 360 mm-hmm. lord of shadows mm-hmm. they actually use that crest in the game on the walls and stuff like that mm-hmm. so i remember that crest to be similar it might not be exact but it is similar in my opinion well it's the it's the belmont crest in general right yeah. as they actually explain in the show it's actually been in every one of the games in one way shape mm-hmm. it's just that because of the fact of where you were located <laughs> in that game that it was very crest heavy for that symbol okay because i do remember seeing it a lot so that that makes sense it was location I played a big the representation of him that was i mean he looked cool like in the show um mm-hmm. it was very different we saw that picture that kyle was describing the way he looked in one of the games which game was it was it number three um it, it is the third game but yeah. that specific image was a uh artist uh, rendition re uh re-illustration for a different game for a later edition okay i don't remember which okay um all right so yeah. before we dive any deeper i did mention a guy adi shankar, adi shankar yeah and he is a producer and Forget his movies, <laughs> go to his YouTube page, watch the Gritty Power Rangers. When that came out, it blew my mind. And then Sammy showed me uh, Punisher Dirty Laundry. Yeah, it's, That's yeah. A, just oh. a can, quick background, just Adi Shankar, a film producer. He He's known for his uh, um, uh, feature length films that he produces, but he also does a lot of fan produced stuff that Garth just said you can find on his YouTube page. And they're they're awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, just a heads up, he made Dread. The Grey. Produced Dread in the Grey, Killing yeah. Them Softly and Lone mm. Survivor. So. And he also did uh, Machine Gun Preacher with Gerard Butler. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's not it's not bad. I just kind of want to throw that in yeah. there. I don't think it's a bad film. Yeah, so mm. I really did enjoy Dread. Even though yeah, Dread's awesome. Really... That has such a following now, right? And No, not, not one of yours, Kyle? You kinda no, he didn't you feel like it. You made a sour like face. It. It was, the movie was good, but he didn't feel like a Dread. Did you read Dread, you read Dread comics? I have. You have, yeah? I just, it doesn't, doesn't feel, feel like, like it. Yeah. I he felt too emotional and not just being the judge the juror and the executioner. I thought he did a good job of balancing both Carl Urban, but I guess it's for another it's yeah, yeah, for another yeah. podcast. No, the only reason yeah, why yeah. I brought up yeah. Dread is yeah. uh, it's one of the most could, popular ones. It's one of the most popular ones, but the way he portrayed the character, some had controversy with that. But if you see the gritty Power Rangers, you'll then again see he's accurate with his characters and also the Punisher. Mm. He's accurate with his characters, so I have a lot of hope on him because he's making. He's kind of breaking the industry. We had Mario, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was horrible. Assassin's Creed was another one. Yeah, he's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hitman was another one. Mm. I didn't enjoy the Hitman ones either. I haven't seen them because I heard they were terrible. The, yeah. The, the, the new one and the one before that that came out a few years ago. The only ones I want to say is pretty good is the Need for Speed ones. Uh, the I one with Aaron too. Paul, yeah. Need for Speed. And I thought that was enjoyable. Mm. But in terms of groundbreaking, it's not there. But with Eddie, Sh- Eddie Shankar, I feel like if we can get that, we can break that trend, we can get something that's good, and maybe these video game adaptations might just jump on Netflix to create more and more. And I would love to see that, right? Let's... Yeah. I would too. Whenever he produ- whenever his name is attached to a production, it's got a lot of, um, whether you like it or not, it does have, it's very gritty, it's very violent, but it's got a lot of heart to it. There's, like, films like Dread were, were made with such passion, mm-hmm. and I feel like... I, obviously, we can't prove it, but I feel like he was just a big driving force behind that. And whenever I see interviews about making a Dread sequel or about the the science about how Dread got funded and stuff like that, he's usually the one talking about it. And he's usually... I, I associate that film very much with his face yeah. because I see him talking about it so much. So And yeah, you can tell he has a big heart for these kinds of things. Yeah, the, the thing is like... It depends on them learning the role, and I think Eddie Schenker does that well. Yeah, he knows these characters. So he knows his characters, which is hard yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. Because some people, like, we go to Iron Fist, you guys might have watched it, may have not, mm-hmm. but if you see the way the character is, he is actually supposed to be a martial arts fighter, and what we got was not a martial arts fighter, or a martial arts series. So that tells you how badly <laughs> <Fred>. you can chop, <laughs> chop that up, yeah. <laughs> so... That, that's like just giving you an idea of how bad it could have went right so from here let's just dive more into the show if you guys want to yeah. um before that 
well, sorry again. Uh, we still think, I think we need to at least put a little bit on Sam Dietz as well. Because he right. was the one that did the art, I believe, right? Yeah, he did the artwork. I do not know much about him, but I know the artwork from what I see right now. It's really good. Visually, it was amazing. Watching this show is worth it just for the visuals alone. Hmm. The visuals and the art and the art, uh, the, the rating to it. Absolutely. Because without that rating and without that kind of art, I don't think we would have got anything that we would have had now with that. Because hmm. it could have been much worse, in my opinion. Because hmm. the graphics that he, and the gore he's willing to, capable of drawing, yeah, was very, it was just so well done. Hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. At one point, we did see like a finger loss, an eye loss. And it was just like the fact that it's stuck to the wall well, for a second. It, it, it's it's oh. very like yeah, it looks very organic. Spoiler, sorry, that's not too much. It was <laughs> no, we, don't, we don't know when it happens. Yeah, it'd be, yeah, yeah, but the gore that does happen, it looks very organic. It doesn't. Look, it feels real though. Yeah, it feels, it feels real. real. Like it looks painful. It does. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Some it's, of the scenes are just. Whew. It's not meant to go. It, like there's there's bloody action and violence in films and movie and films and TV. Sometimes it just make you to go yeah, make you like excited. This like or just entertain you. This actually made you go ugh. Like, yeah, it's gross. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> what yeah. happens. Yeah, that's what happens when they, yeah. Another thing about Adi Shankar, Shankar's production is they're really graphically, vi- they're really graphic and violent, mm-hmm. but they're never like, they're not cashing in on that. I feel like his, his productions are saying like, this is how disgusting we can be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was prevalent throughout the whole series mm. because that's what they were trying to point out. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. It's just humanity as a whole can be really disgusting at times. And you can see that with the way the speakers were treated, right? Yeah, the, the speaker characters. Yeah. They were really fascinating to me. I, I, I found them very interesting. Yeah, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's one thing about the series that really, that I really enjoyed was the way they opened it up. They gave us a really genuine emotion. They mm. made us feel for the characters. Yes. I won't tell you what happens, but that scene for that episode, I don't know about you guys, but it touched some heartstrings. Like... Oh. I was surprised. They gave reasons. They gave direction. They made it to where even bad guys can have their own general reasons of why they do certain things. Mm. Um, yeah. It's just, they gave him a driving force to do what he does. The the villain is very justified. And, and like, I'm, I'm obviously, uh, we, you're not rooting Root for, for him. him. Yeah, yeah. But you, at the same That's time... <laughs> well, unless you're Kyle, yeah, unless you you're Kyle, necess- you know, because remember he is yeah. a vampire, right? Yeah, that's, so, right, that's right. Like uh... you said, you were right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Um, you're not rooting for him, regardless, unless you're Kyle. But um, at the very least, if you are rooting for him, fine. God bless you. But if you if you aren't, then uh, you understand where he's coming from. You understand why he's doing what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Is he going overboard? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But it. You're kind of like, yeah, like he has every right to kind of yeah do what he exact did. this kind of vengeance within his own means. Mm-hmm. It's it's intense, but yeah, I don't, I didn't feel, I didn't feel bad for what he was doing to the people when he started to <laughs> exact his vengeance. It was kind of like I almost was like, yeah. There, there is some um, <laughs> the way fire is shown in that series, mm. just in general, well drawn, very it, well drawn. It gives fire character. It gave the sky character in that moment where something drop down right mm. so like that literally the artwork there the way they presented it was beautiful mm-hmm. so uh, i can't give them any more credit for that like it's like give them as much ratings as possible because yeah. that was amazing even if you don't like the story just look I, I know i said it already but just looking at this show is so, like it's just so beautiful and it's gothic like it has yes. that look right yeah it feels like um something from like a classical vampire tale yet it's done in a refreshing way at the same time yeah you know yeah. like it it does look something it shows you the yeah. gore it shows you the dark it shows you the gritty but at the same time it's, it's showing you the uh the serene the emotional the just the, the romantic, beauty yeah. the, the romance everything is just combined into one to make it feel real yeah i i and it's and, very intelligent in the age of twilight this that is very nice to yeah see. <laughs> no disrespect i prefer no sparkling i prefer vampires. this yeah. this in this rendition and take on vampires and uh, yeah, just because it gets back, it gets back to the classics. Mm-hmm. It gets back to the classical interpretation, right? It goes back to the to to, to Dracula himself, right? Yeah, and it, of... and it does it through a video game, through a video game series, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about the classics, you got the classic whip and weaponry. Mm-hmm. So, what do you guys think about the weaponry? Because for me, I played a lot of Castlevania games in the 3DS and GBA, so <laughs> a lot of it was whip oriented. <laughs> 
and then you, you do use a sword at times. Just his arsenal, what he threw those knives. I remember seeing these pixelated knives being thrown when I was <laughs> <laughs> this blocky character jumps up and he throws a knife and then hearts fall out of the light right, and right. stuff like that. That's what I remember it, but the way they portrayed it here was the intelligent use of weaponry. So I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Oh, yeah. They showed three different weapons from him, I believe. Just those three that you just mentioned, actually. Yeah. With uh, short one of which came years. down in the line of his family heirlooms. Uh, mm-hmm. The other one, I can't remember where. The sword. Maybe it was from the second? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Someone can put it in the comments. And that thank you for it. <gasps> but, mm-hmm. other than that, the daggers... Or, you know, were they daggers that he used? Yeah, well, like, th- like they're like throwing, throwing knives. knives. Yeah. But he always does have... When I remember the icon, thinking back, it was just a dagger-like icon. It showed yeah. a dagger. That's how I remember it. Because they labeled that as a dagger as well. Yeah. You can also throw the cross, holy water, and what was the other one? Well, um, they actually, they pull out a couple of those references. Yeah, they do. They, they do. Um, they, I don't want to say it. There is something else that he uses, but I don't want to spoil it. Mm, yeah, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing that they don't show, which isn't much of a spoiler for what we're what you would be watching, should you watch this first movie slash series up uh, settings, is that there's actually supposed to be four characters, four uh, to the oh, team. Oh, there... one's missing. One's missing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, which one's missing? I didn't know that. It's... Can we say it? Would that be... <laughs> yeah, can we say it on Ooh. this one? We won't so... say which. Yeah, okay. we won't say which. You so got to tune into the know spoiler the games one. Better, yeah. 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 Um, Not really, I just referenced it. Like, we well, you know, better than, you know better than me. You know better than me. <laughs> you know what? There's one thing I wanted to say was the movements of the character. So, usually when you think about a main character, they have infinite stamina. Mm. But when this character ran, you've seen him. You see sweat, you see breaths. You hear the breaths. breaths. He's like, he's... He's, uh, he's tired, he's yeah. worn out. And he's... um. He's not in great shape. He says his character's not in, in great physical shape. He's then think of his opponents yeah, too, shape, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. The way the opponents were shown, mm-hmm. right? The way mob and like people were shown, yep. right? So it's like when you see that bar fight and they're happening there, the well, characters are real. I'm not going to say what happens <laughs> or where. <laughs> well, you just said where. Yeah, just yeah. Said where. <laughs> that's, true, that's true. It's okay. Don't worry. It's all right. No spoilers on that. That's, that's yeah. nothing. That's, that, that, that's gonna happen in the first few minutes. Yeah, it doesn't. Ha- it happens pretty early, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Either way, um, the fight scenes are within the context of, of Castlevania. They're pretty realistic. They're, yeah, they, they, they look. That's the point yeah. I wanted to get to. Like every character has actual character to it. Mm-hmm. Even when they move and fight, they have that realism with them, right? It's Even still with highly some of the small characters too. Yeah, it's still highly stylized though. Like they do a good job of, of making it like over the top at times. But still, they incorporate like yeah, like the panting, the breathing, the sweating, the the blood, the yeah. cold aspect. No, won't say how. Say yeah. how. Yeah, no, that it's it's well done in that in that regard. Like you could tell the art. I feel like the artist. This must, this must be maybe you know Sam Dietz though with the animation. Yeah. Um, that's he, why he could, I'm giving him so much. Yeah, no, it's rightfully so. I've never seen him before this, in my personal opinion. But it's just mm. wow. Yeah. The, the art. Has his style worked so well with these other two very great like people in that industry that it just the three of them made like a triforce. Yeah, it was it was it's a really solid production. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget the rest of the cast. There. There's a lot of people that put into that. Oh yeah, um, who was it again that did uh, Trevor's voice? Richard Armitage, I believe. Mm-hmm. And who did he do? I believe he did Kyle. Thank you for asking. I believe he did uh, Thor and Oakenshield from the Hobbit. The Hobbit. I believe he was Thorin. Yes. It, I had a feeling his voice seemed Who else? Wait, wait, I'm drawing a blank. He did somebody else too, didn't he? I can't remember. <laughs> but he's known for, for playing Thorin in The Hobbit. Now, see, he had great voice acting. I don't know about some of the characters in the beginning. Some of the side characters. I didn't think oh. their acting, voice acting really fit the scene until no? later on. Yeah. Hmm. Because I think the main character and like the main elements of the people were there. But I feel like um, you meet an older woman right at the beginning. You meet some character ch- chit-chat in the background. Mm. They didn't feel like the medieval time to me. Mm. It felt like someone put on an accent and just did it. Some of the... Um, well, I mean, it's supposed to be um, uh, Romania, right? Tra- w- Wallachia. Or Wallachia. Am I saying it right? Yeah, well... Uh, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be Romania, right? I think all the characters have English accents. Mm. So there's that. That's not really accurate. When you, when you do that yeah. and there's also some of the dialogue does feel like 
it feels a little bit more modern than mm. it should be. Yeah. But that's that, that you can get too much. Yeah. You can get past yeah. it, but at the beginning it just caught me off guard. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I noticed that and I'm just like there's something wrong. It's not quite resonating well. And then yeah. once a once the main character start up talking, it's like it's back to normal. Mm-hmm. You forget that element happened, but yeah. it still got me there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things. Uh, is there no, anything that got you guys? It still works. Yeah, it still works. Anything that got us? Yeah. Kyle? In a negative aspect? Yeah. There's, there's always a positive and negative to this. <laughs> I'm still fresh off the boat of watching it. We just <laughs> happened yesterday. The fact that yeah. you already have negative is pretty surprising. It was really good in my opinion. Let me rewatch it once or twice. That's why I'm the host with the most, <laughs> right? You're coming to me. <laughs> Gotta break it down. <laughs> Well, so far it's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm still pretty. I'm still pretty hyped by it too. I gotta be honest. It, it, I really am enjoying. Like, it. I'm kind of coming off like the uh, the excitement of having watched it first. Okay, how and, about the um, lack of episodes? I wanted so. That much was yeah. More. It was short. Like it was short. Well, it, was, it, yeah. it was meant like supposed to be like a movie that was split into four pieces. But it was like uh, you go and you get the entree, and you're waiting for your full course meal, but the rest don't show up because you just the way it, it, ends, you it makes up. you feel that way. It does make you feel like oh, Let's I just give the it wants, reference yeah. from uh, from what we just mentioned, The Hobbit. It's like watching the first movie of The Hobbit. Whoa, at least you got three hours. What, what was it, two hours? It was like two, two hours, hours and 50 minutes, minutes I think. Did you the get first my one. point of where it left off? I would say that Not more about. Length. I would say that more about Lord of the Rings. I feel like I wanted more of Lord How about I was kind of like, oh God, they took this book and then they made it into, <laughs> three, it into three. Three, three hour movies or two and a half. But even if they shrunk it down to, a, to an hour and a half, it yeah. would still leave off at the point which it was supposed to. I know. I I, I see what you're saying. And the place in which it, po- it left off at is about the same feel that we had from here, to where it was great. Oh my god! Yeah. Why'd you cliffhanger us? Come on, more, more, more. Okay, more, more, more. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I we said can, it with Lord of the Rings. We can get more into that some other time. <laughs> he loves the Hobbit. He prefers the Hobbit over Lord of the Rings. I just wanted to leave you with that. He probably loves the supercut of Hobbit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to watch that still. All right. Sorry, Chris. All right. <laughs> so we're coming to an end. Is there any last thoughts for a quick... No? Maybe you... ratings? Yeah, we yeah, can, yeah, we're yeah. Gonna, before well, the ratings happen. I mean, like an eight... Just out of ten, out of ten, out yeah, of ten. Yeah, out of ten, we can do that. Yeah. No, no, no. I was going to say, just recommend based on if you really liked it, if you didn't, if you feel like it was a blockbuster production, if you thought it was a real high-ended, something like that. Just give your opinion on it. Oh, yep. I, well, as we were saying about Netflix doing it, they allowed us to get it to the point in which it should have been. So, mm-hmm. don't give me that stare, you're making me confused. <laughs> no, 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 you have the words, and I, I want to call it a Netflix buster. <laughs> hey, the net buster. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. So. It's a net buster. <laughs> How about you? It's really good. Well, uh, if you haven't watched it, I would recommend it if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, you know, what? the fact that it is shorter, remember growing up and watching YTV? up you know like justice league batman the animated series spider-man stuff like that 20 minute episodes of just awesome quality animation and storytelling so yeah i really liked it i really enjoyed it you should check it out yeah i definitely loved it as well i would definitely say watch on the first day it was definitely watching on 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 that friday binge watching it was like definitely worth it it was exciting it was fun uh so before we close off if anyone can find that stupid cooked bird or if they're going to put it in the second season, someone let me know in the descriptions below. Because I really want to find it. You know, I need, need that help myself, you know? <laughs> so before we get done, uh, please, if you liked our podcast and our little spotlight here, make sure you like, subscribe, and give us a shout out in the comments. Um, subscribe, by the way. Take care. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, you can check out the next video here. If you're in a daring mood, you can select a random video here. Welcome to Guard Spotlight, the host with the most, and definitely the vampire killer. Over here we got Kyle. He is a vampire. He is our Dracula. And this here is Sam, and he is a great mage, or speaker as they call it. So we'll be diving into Castlevania, if you haven't figured out this much. And uh, Castlevania is a game series that has been around for a long period of time throughout the generations. And it has been dealt with defeating vampires, particularly stopping Dracula from resurrecting. 
and usually 2D platform similar to Metroid, which a lot of people might know a lot more. So from there, we'll get right into it and get into Castlevania. Yeah, so also this episode is mainly about the uh, the Netflix show that just premiered yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Right, Friday, right? Yeah, the four episode uh, uh, series that just premiered. We're going to be done. Right? Yes. yes. So those two trees, which I do not know much about. I read the first volume of that. I don't know if volume two is out yet, but it's excellent. Is it? It's very interesting, yeah. And Injection. Injection I just read too. I yeah, got the it came out library. last uh, year, right? Yeah, uh, there's more. There's several volumes. I've read the first volume, so not mm. the whole thing, but it's very good as well. Yeah, I know he's a uh, very popular. He's right? very it's prolific. Popular. He's written tons of stuff, um, and all those uh, comics that you listed, I've read them all. They're so good. Transmetropolitan's amazing. Planetary is amazing. Global Frequency is really cool. He's done some other more obscure stuff as well. He usually comments on technology and yeah. uh, uh, just. The state of world, yeah, sociocultural culture. commentary, where we're going into the future. Nanotechnology, cryogenics, uh, what was it? Mind transfer yeah, mind and transfer, human yeah. enhancement. And so, I lent you Transmetropolitan. I think that was has all of those things yes. in one. Yeah. yeah. So, oh my God. Yeah. Don't forget about books, Crooked Little Vein. Crooked Little Vein was his first book. And it was awesome because it was a series of stuff he found on the internet. A right? series of like disgusting things that delving particularly into that today. Yeah, specifically yeah. into that. It just came out on Friday. Just came out, yeah. yeah. So... Oh, it man. was good. <laughs> Let's just start with that. It was. I, I'm not a big gamer, and I don't know much about Castlevania, but um, I I know about the lore about about uh, Vlad the Impaler, and about the character Dracula himself. I love the novel. I've read it a couple of times. I've seen many adaptations, so I was really interested in this. And just again, right off the bat, this is really interesting. It's really fun, and uh, it's it's really entertaining. Yeah. Um... To keep it on that note, uh, we will try to refrain to say too much about the games themselves and stick mostly to the show. But the only thing we will state in terms of its reference is that it's closely... No, it pretty much is based off of Castlevania 3. That's as far as we'll go in that aspect. Yeah, just to let you know, this is spoiler free. We will have a spoiler one, most likely next week, but it'll encompass all the spoilers that we talk about today. But today we'll be diving... I, I guess his fan base sent him on the internet? <laughs> and he kind of just turned that into a hard-boiled detective story. It's amazing. So I've been reading it. I'm not through it all. But it is really good. And it's really disturbing. <laughs> and uh, the way it got sold to me was the rat scene. If you want to explain it, you do it better. The rat scene. Is that the very beginning? Yeah. Oh, yeah, at the very beginning, yeah. Um, basically, <laughs> it starts with... A, the very first line is a rat urinating in the main character's coffee. Mug. Yeah, 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 and it scatters away before yeah, he... Yeah, and it runs away before it, yeah. And he had a couple of close calls to drink it, so... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you get an idea, like, what he's writing here. He That's also the least has... disgusting part of the book. It gets it's progressively worse, more yeah. disgusting. <laughs> but it's hilarious and it's fun the second book yeah. i was going to mention is gun machine gun and machine, yeah. normal uh normal just came out i didn't read it but yeah. gun machine i've read so and it's good this, so gun machine was also another one now for video games and this surprised me a lot i love dead space so the fact that he wrote in dead space just surprised me but yeah. it also explains the whole technology aspects and like <laughs> those creatures and into who made it and who wrote it and then we'll talk a little bit about the show and what we thought about it so First off, uh, some of the names behind it, right? I yeah. don't know if you guys know Warren Ellis, so we'll start there. He's a big <laughs> name, and he was a big part of the production because he jumped aboard, and it really started picking up the hype train. So he's the main writer. Um, Warren Ellis is my favorite writer. He's literally like, as far as the uh, within the comic book world, uh, and maybe just in general, he's my favorite writer. I, I absolutely love his work. He's done some great stuff. Like, uh, you want to list some of it off? We done a. Uh, He's done, um, so he, first of all, he breaks down into three categories. He has actually written for video game stories. He has, he has. He has done books. He's done it all. And he has comic books. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, uh, he did some film, like, just loads. Red, I uh, was adapted, uh, uh, was adapted, adapted. into uh, yeah. Red and Red 2. So, I can go through the list real quick. Uh, comic books, Transmetropolitan, Global Frequency, Red. And like you said, turn into uh, the movies, Red yeah. 1 and 2. Yes, the one with Bruce Willis. 